second year in the Senate. And I will tell you, I voted no on the budget in 2015. So I had no idea what was going to happen. I didn't. They'll never tell you what the consequences are for voting no on the budget. No one had done it for 10 years. Nancy Dahlstrom from Eagle River had done it 10 years before because they were trying to take the comment on dividend money. So um, basically, uh, I, I was I had a great office. I had a big corner office. I had four staff, and I was just you know I was I was one of those rising uh, stars in the Republican Party, and I had tremendous support. Um, I was serving on six committees. But anyway, I was doing really really well. We had an agreement in regards to. I'm just going to touch on the Biden caucus just for a minute before I get into it, into what I'm working on right now. But we had an agreement. There was five principles. Two of the five principles in our Republican caucus was save for future generations and live within our means. They were violating two of the principles that were out there on the Republican. And, I, and then uh, we made an agreement in caucus, if we cut the budget, we don't add it back in. Sadly, Mark Newman, I'm not meaning to, you know, too, too much on him, but he was the person that was head of the, uh, the budget, basically. There was 81 budgets in 2015, and almost all of them were putting our budget cuts that we had worked so hard to cut from the budget. He added them all back in. And that was so frustrating. And that's when I knew, who do I fail right now? Do I fail my caucus? Do I fail the promises to the people? Do I fail the people that I re represent and, and the platform that I stand on? I went in my office and I asked my staff, I don't know what's going to happen. This hasn't been done by anybody since I've been here. And, and I said, what do I do? And they said, we're going to quit if you don't vote no, because you have made a promise to the people. Your platform says it. Your principles say it. It's absolute integrity. You believe it in your heart. So I went out on that floor and I voted no on the budget, not knowing what was going to happen. Immediately, I got um, three staff members fired and one budget the same day. Same day it happened. Same day I got punished. Three, three of them were fired, and then one of them, um, within about a month or so, got cut uh, one third of her salary. I ended up when we ended session, um, I got of course stripped off all but one committee, and uh, and then I ended up um, on my birthday believe it or not, uh, getting take my office taken by a fellow colleague that I helped get elected, and I got put in a storage room where I had to store, share a desk with one colleague, with my one staffer that I got. And so um, so that was kind of a, a very trying time. I could get into a lot more details of what, what happened, but it went on for a year and a half. It went on for a year and a half. And I just dug <coughs> in, I just dug my heels in, and just said, I'm gonna be positive, I'm going to stand firm. And this is where I, I slide just a little bit different from Mike in regards to this. Do you really have representation when they're being coerced and they're buying into that? And, you know, and that's my point, that you really don't have representation. If, maybe I don't have the staff and maybe the biggest office is, is, is maybe others do, but you guys have someone that stands on the, on the platform that keeps their promises that will, be, that will follow the Republican uh, principles and, the, and our caucus principles. And so that to me is real representation. It's harder, we have to work a lot harder because uh, we don't have the resources you know, as, as much as others, but I also think that you do have better representation uh, without the Biden caucus. So now I'm gonna transition um, into what I'm working on right now. And by the way, six years now, that's, um, I've been punished uh, because I, I keep continuing to stand my ground on the principles of the Republican platform, the principles, even the principles that we agreed on. We changed the Biden caucus, me, Mike, and Shelley, Senator Hughes, and, and me is great to work with, and actually, um, Peter McChickie is part of part of our group, as is um, David Wilson often, but we're just a little stronger, you know, in regards to whole, standing our ground. Um, but anyway, so right now what we're doing is, is um, do, you, do you guys find this disaster that was declared with zero cases of COVID? No. There wasn't a zero, there was zero cases. We went back and listened to the press release. It was a disaster, but there was not a single case of COVID-19. I'm sorry, but I got a major red flag, and I was like, wait a minute, we gotta define, you know, we have to be able to define the disaster. And, uh, and then what I did is I ended up <coughs> kind of like, how can he do this? How can he do that? How can he write laws? The legislature did two, two major things that we get, get to do. Do you know what those two things are? Appropriations. Appropriations. What's the other one? Writing laws. Uh, yeah. Writing laws. Those are the two things that legislators get to do. That's a really important constitutional powers. The mandates are writing laws in the executive branch. So in my opinion, those are not official laws because the legislative branch has that constitutional responsibility. And if you, do, if he is going to do an executive order, he has to call, you know, in, in regards to these type of mandates. Our opinion is that he has to declare martial law. Then he gets 20 days to do that. If he's going to, if he's going to take freedoms away, he's got 20 days. And he has to call the legislature back in. Two thirds of the legislature has to agree. So I just. 
the more and more I, I decided to read every single mandate, so I did, and I had a big binder out in the car, if anyone wants to see the big binder, but I read all of the mandates. And I was just thinking really hard, what can I do, what can I do to help change what's going on? And I got a really deep impression that I needed to read the Declaration of Independence, that I needed to read the United States Constitution, and the Constitution of the State of Alaska, so I did that. Then I posted on Facebook and I said, does anyone else want to join me in my, my efforts for going way back and looking you know, at, at, at what our, this country was founded upon? And so um, I got about 10 people that joined me and we started Constitutional Freedom Fighters and all of the people read those, read the Declaration, the U.S. Constitution, the Constitution of the State of Alaska, and then we had to read every single mandate and the mandate, there, there's a ton of them. And uh, so, and then we cross-examined all of those to the Constitution and we over, we, of course we were all, I, we were all independent. We came that there was grotesque violations to our constitutional rights. Then we had to make a decision, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do about it? So first of all, as a senator, I decided to write a Senate joint resolution. So in early May, I wrote a Senate joint resolution. I gave it um, to the, uh, the courts. I gave it to the executive branch, including the attorney general and the governor, and then every senator and every legislator, and I tried to get that passed. I also tried to jerk the governor's powers in early May and I got 10 votes out of 20, which was huge considering the blinding caucus. One of them, Gary Stevens, ended up flipping at the last minute, but it, but it was, you know, it, it, I, all, we almost had that, where the power went back to the legislature instead of the executive branch. They're supposed to enforce laws. We're supposed to write them. Well, and so uh, we ended up, um, I knew that I possibly wasn't gonna get as far as I wanted to with the legislature, so I ended up saying that the power belongs to the people. So we started the People's Petition for Their Government. I'm not gonna read it to you right now. I wish I could right now, but I'm not gonna. I know it's getting a little bit long, but this is a powerful, powerful document. Hundreds of hours went into this for, from 10 volunteers, and we started the People's Petition. We've got about 3,500 signatures right now, but this is the people taking back their government. This is very, very important, so I'm gonna encourage each and every single one of you to go to Constitutional Freedom Fighters on Facebook and go to the Alaska chapter, sign our petition, and you're gonna start getting a lot of information. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, and, and, and that's super, super important, just about all of your rights that are being violated and why it was, is inappropriate. So, so the second <laughs> arm we have is Chandra Kefroy, and this is one at, right here, raise your hand. She's got a combat veteran husband right here, three-time combat veteran husband right here, so thank you. <laughs> was the therapy of my group, Constitutional Freedom Fighters, and meeting Alaskans for Constitutional Rights, Chandra down in Homer, born and raised, third generation Alaskan. She's just been amazing to work with. She's uh, pregnant with her second child, um, and, and like I said, she's a homeschool mom, and she decided if she's gonna look around, if no one's gonna fight her fight, she's going to. So she stood up, and, and, and I'm just in awe of her. She stood up, and uh, we met a couple months ago, and we decided to join forces. So she's the legal arm and the fundraising arm, and then we are the constitutional freedom fighters that so educate, empower, and engage all Alaskans to help defend your constitutional guaranteed rights, your inherent rights, the Bill of Rights, and your inalienable rights guaranteed in the, in the Declaration of Independence. So I'm gonna ask everyone, who's willing to read the Declaration of Independence, the State of Alaska Constitution, and the United States Constitution within the next week? I just, I just wanna put a challenge out, raise your hand. I'll read it again. Okay, good job. Because it, it is so empowering. And I hope, hi, I'm just going to put a little a little push too for the Founding Fathers Bible at Wall Builders. It's the best document I've ever written in my life. It is amazing. It talks about a lot of what our Founding Fathers went through for us. They pledged their lives, their treasure, and their honor to one another. We've had so many military people die for us. We've had so many Founding Fathers, and, 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 and that's what when someday when we get to meet them. I don't want to say, what did you do? We pledged our lives. We pledged our treasure. We pledged our sacred honor. What did you do to save this country? The time right now is not to sit around. The time is to engage. The time is to get involved. So first of all, I'm going to say, please get on. Read your Declaration of Independence. Read the Constitution. Read the United States. Know your rights. If you don't know your rights, people can tread on them, and they're treading on them. That's why I love that sign in there. So first of all, do that. Second, please go and read the, read our petition. It'll, it'll take you three minutes to read our, our petition. It's on Constitutional Freedom Fighters Alaska chapter on Facebook. And then please go to Alaskans for Constitutional Rights. Put some treasure there, okay? Yeah. We're putting hundreds of hours, day and night. I can't tell you how hard we're working. We've retained a lawyer, she has, and, uh, and they're working, and there's gonna be a pretty significant announcement soon. 
So, uh, but right now we definitely are in, in she, they are in need, her, her arm is in need of financial resources, so that's Alaskans for Constitutional Rights. So, um, with that, I wanted to say, Ron, thank you for inviting me to speak. I am looking so forward. You guys, does, who thinks he's going to win? <laughs> I'm looking forward to working with Ron. I've known Ron for years, and I, I really enjoy his friendship, and his wife is amazing. Where is she? Yes. Oh, you are amazing. Okay, anyway, lovely, lovely wife. So you, I'm looking really forward, you guys, and, and at, this, at this point in time, I'm going to ask you, if you don't have a sign, Get a sign for Ron in your yard. You haven't donated, donate. I think these streets should just, you know, color up with Ron Gillum's sign. So thank you very much, Ron. Thank you.